listening to the Naked Bible Podcast. To support this podcast, go to www.nakedbibleblog.com. Welcome back to the Naked Bible Podcast. We're still in the early stages of a series on Bible study. We began the series talking about how essential it is to interpret the Bible in its own context. That context, of course, being the world of the ancient Near East with respect to the Old Testament and the Second Temple period with respect to the New Testament. Interpreting the Bible in these contexts means thinking like a person living at these times, which the biblical writers did. The best way to do that is to immerse yourself in the worldview of the civilizations of these eras with which the biblical writers had regular contact and which they were a part of. We've already spent several episodes on my recommendations for accessing the texts of the ancient Near East and Second Temple period, the intellectual output of the civilizations and cultures that formed the original context of the Old and New Testaments. In this episode and the next, I want to recommend the best books and reference works for understanding the religion and culture of the ancient Near East and Second Temple periods. Scholars who are steeped in this material have produced many essays explaining the worldview of these civilizations and how that worldview matters for biblical study and interpretation. I want to direct you to the best of those resources. As is our pattern, we'll devote this episode to the ancient Near East, the context for the Old Testament, before moving to the Second Temple period, the context for the New Testament, in the next episode of the podcast. And as always, you'll find links to these resources at www.nakedbiblepodcast.com under the Bibliography and Resources tab. Let's start with the books that I recommend most for Old Testament study, keeping the Old Testament in its ancient Near Eastern context. And these are really reference works. One of the best sets that you can get, because it covers virtually all areas of religion and culture and history, things like you know, poetry and medicine and science, uh, pretty much everything you could think of that would be part of a person's world in the ancient world, in one set, as it pertains to the ancient Near East, is a set called... Civilizations of the Ancient Near East. And the editor is a fellow named Jack Sasson. That's S-A-S-S-O-N. Now, originally, this was published in four volumes. You can purchase it now in a two-volume set. It's a little expensive, but there's really nothing better uh, that I could recommend. And every once in a while, you'll find this set, uh, the two volumes, the four volumes in two volumes, on sale on Amazon or used bookstore or something like Christian book distributors. Uh, I personally, I got my set for less than $100 and it's been well worth it. The next set I'd recommend is a set that is published by InterVarsity Press. These are the Dictionary of the Old Testament series. There are four volumes. The fourth volume just was released this past month and This is a wonderful set. It breaks the Old Testament up into the Pentateuch. That's one volume. Historical books is another. Wisdom, poetry, and writings is a third. And then the Old Testament prophets is a fourth. Now, this is a dictionary set aimed at the Old Testament, the academic study of the Old Testament. But the articles within them uh, on any given subject really pay attention to the ancient Near Eastern worldview of which the Old Testament is a part. And if I could put a personal plug in here, there are there are great articles in the Wisdom, Poetry, and Writings uh, volume and the Prophets volume on the Divine Council. Uh, you can guess why I'm recommending that, because I wrote them. I also have two articles in the Prophets volume on uh, chaos and destruction. So you can tell just by those kinds of articles, especially chaos and destruction, that these dictionaries are really aimed at Old Testament symbols, Old Testament motifs, 
the, the kinds of things that Old Testament writers are using, you'll see them in the Old Testament, but they have a very wide but specific context in the ancient world in which a biblical writer lived and wrote. And these reference works, this series by InterVarsity is just wonderful for helping you get right to the heart of the matter in any given topic as it relates to Old Testament study. Now, the last reference work that I think is essential, uh, that I just think is just top of the line, is the Dictionary of Deities and Demons in the Bible. Now, if you've been paying attention to any of my websites uh, for any amount of time, you have heard of this resource before. Uh, I often tell people this is probably the only reference work that I have that I could just read cover to cover. And I've read most of it. Uh, it. There's just nothing like it. It's specifically aimed at divine beings, uh, anything that sort of uh, relates to gods and angels and all sorts of uh, otherworldly uh, spiritual realm sorts of topics in the Old Testament. And every entry uh, is written by someone versed, you know, with their eye tuned to the ancient Near Eastern context. And this reference work I'll also recommend when we get to the New Testament or the Second Temple uh, podcast because they do the same thing. The, the writers in this volume, if they're writing on something that pertains to New Testament study, they are deeply entrenched in Second Temple period sources that really help you. So this is just a wonderful set. Now with respect to specific books that you would not you know, call reference works or multi-volume reference works anyway, there are really two types. There are recommended books that help you understand and learn about a particular civilization in the ancient Near East, let's say ancient Egypt. And then there are books that do what those reference works uh, do. There are individual volumes on specific issues that will take ancient Near Eastern material and relate it immediately to the Old Testament. So I want to cover both. With respect to books about the ancient Near East, when it comes to history and culture, I have some recommendations. Uh, when, but when I say history and culture, I mean the flow of the history of these civilizations. And when I say culture, part of that is religion, but I'm going to give you some specific titles that are just about ancient Near Eastern religion. But part of, part of the culture is the religion, but again, it's science, it's you know, how normal people lived you know, in, in everyday life in the ancient Near East, uh, how they made a living, how they cooked, what they ate, what they wore. Uh, it could be how, how their government worked, their institutions. It, it's wider than just religion. But religion is a, a special interest of mine, so I'll be hitting those separately. But just for history and culture, ancient Near East, I recommend the following. Uh, the book by uh, Al Hurt and... Other editors are Mattingly and Yamauchi. It's called Peoples of the Old Testament World. And this is just what it sounds like. Every chapter takes another uh, culture group, another civilization of the Old Testament world, and gives you a complete uh, overview of that civilization. Things like there, there'd be a chapter on the Edomites, there'd be a chapter on the Moabites, and the, and the Ammonites, along with the Egyptians and the Babylonians, and so on and so forth. It's a very good, good resource in one volume. White's book on everyday life in ancient Egypt is highly recommended, as is its counterpart counterpart by Bertman, Handbook to Life in Ancient Mesopotamia. These two books do a nice job of covering everyday life in ancient Egypt, ancient Mesopotamia. Von Soden's introduction to the ancient Near East called The Ancient Orient is also excellent. He has a chapter on all facets of ancient Near Eastern culture. Now, he excludes Egypt. He's, a, he's an Assyriologist by training, or he was. And so his focus is on Sumerians and Babylonians and the Assyrians, that sort of thing. But that's an excellent introduction. Barbara Mertz's book, Red Land, Black Land, Daily Life in Ancient Egypt, is also excellent. It's written for the non-specialists, and it's, and it's sort of written in in non-academic language, uh, but it, it definitely has academic content. Red Land, Black Land, Daily Life in Ancient Egypt by Barbara Mertz. 
two histories I would recommend, both by the same author, Mark Van de Meerup, A History of Ancient Egypt, and then A History of the Ancient Near East. Of course, the one on Ancient Egypt is focused on ancient Egyptian history, and the other volume is the rest of the ancient Near East, uh, mainly Mesopotamia, but also the civilizations with which Mesopotamia had contact with, other than Egypt. Uh, things like the Hittites and the Mitanni and, and so on and so forth. So those are excellent volumes. I actually used both of those volumes in the undergraduate courses I taught at the local college here on ancient Egypt and on ancient Mesopotamia. Let's talk about religion. Ancient Mesopotamian religion, there are some major works that anyone who's interested really should have and read. Uh, Tammy Schneider has an introduction to ancient Mesopotamian religion. Uh, there's, there's no such thing as a systematic theology of ancient Mesopotamian religion or ancient Egyptian religion, but her book actually arranges things in some familiar ways, uh, topical ways. Uh, you know, she'll have a section on, on religious ritual. She'll have a section on religious calendar. Uh, she'll have a section on the gods of the pantheon, the, the divine council in ancient Mesopotamia that sort of thing. So it's a nice survey. Jean Batero, Religion in Ancient Mesopotamia, uh, is also quite good. It's a little more academic than Schneider in terms of the way it's written, but the content of both you can trust. Uh, Jakobsen's book called The Treasures of Darkness, A History of Mesopotamian Religion. Jakobsen was a Sumerian scholar, and this book really aims to sort of understand the religious epics of ancient Sumer and ancient Mesopotamia in sort of a, 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 a developmental way, how these works demonstrate the development of Mesopotamian religious ideas. Black's book, this is a little slim one-volume book called The Gods, Demons, and Symbols of Ancient Mesopotamia, an illustrated dictionary. So it is sort of a reference work, but it's one volume I thought I would include it here because it's solely focused on religion. The entries are short, uh, but the bibliography uh, information is good as well. If you, if you wanted to start with one of them, one of these four, I would start with black just to give you a basic orientation and then move on to one of the others. As far as ancient Egyptian religion, uh, Pinch has two recommended volumes. One is Egyptian Myth, A Very Short Introduction. This is part of the Very Short Introduction series by Oxford. Uh, again, this goes through all the major uh, Egyptian religious myths, the mythic epics, and uh, gives you an overview of what's going on there, what Egyptians thought about their own history and the activity of the gods in the primeval times and so on and so forth. Her other book is called Egyptian Mythology, A Guide to the Gods, Goddesses, and Traditions of Ancient Egypt. It's a fuller version of her short introduction book. Uh, the one I would most recommend here is, is by Emily Teeter, Religion and Ritual in Ancient Egypt. Again, this is, and there is no systematic theology of ancient Egyptian religion, but again, I really like the way she categorizes things in groups, topics, uh, to go through uh, the, the breadth of e ancient Egyptian religion. It's not just about uh, their, their mythologies, about how you know, the gods created everything and then how Egypt came about. It, it's just much broader. It really covers uh, everything, priesthood, liturgy, all that sort of thing, Egyptian magic. Uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's the best thing I, I think there is right now on it. If you can get... Uh, the book by Stephen Quirky, it's Q-U-I-R-K-E, on ancient Egyptian religion. I, I highly recommend that as well, but that's out of print, but you may see it uh, on, in a used bookstore on, online somewhere. Now, as far as Old Testament Israel, specific books, again, rather than multi-volume reference work, but specific books that focus on Old Testament Israel, and even more precisely, understanding the Old Testament in light of uh, its original culture, which, of course, means the broader ancient Near East and also culture in ancient Canaan. Again, the, these, this orientation is the biblical worldview. It is the biblical context. Uh, our contexts, no matter how familiar they are to us, are foreign 
uh, to the to the Bible, and these these sorts of works will really help you uh, frame the context of the Bible correctly. These are the ones that are going to be written by people who are steeped in ancient Mesopotamian religion or ancient Egyptian religion, uh, those other books that I just mentioned, and then they're going to write these works specifically focused on ancient Israel and distill a lot of that ancient Near Eastern information for you and apply it directly to the Bible. The best volume here, if you don't buy anything else I mentioned, I recommend this one above all others, and that is John Walton's Ancient Near Eastern Thought and the Old Testament. The subtitle is Introducing the Conceptual World of the Hebrew Bible, and the title says it all. It tells you just what the book is about. He's going to go through all aspects of ancient uh, Near Eastern and Old Testament thought, you know, prophecy, cosmology, law, ritual, uh, the afterlife, all these sorts of topics, again, showing you how the ancient Near East informs your reading of the Hebrew Bible, the Old Testament. Walton has another book I recommend here just on cosmology in Genesis 1, and that is The Lost World of Genesis 1, Ancient Cosmology and the Origins Debate. Uh, it's excellent. Uh, if, you've been, if you've been in Memra courses, you've read this, we've used this, I've blogged about it before. Uh, I have some minor disagreements with Walton, but I heartily recommend the book. Uh, it, to me, uh, viewing Genesis 1 for what it is, an ancient Near Eastern creation story, uh, really undermines the whole debate about uh, how we understand Genesis. So the, the answer to that question is we ought to understand Genesis for what it was when it was written in its own context, not our context, scientific or otherwise. Now, Israelite religion, there's a very good survey book that is often used in undergraduate courses or even some graduate courses by Patrick Miller called The Religion of Ancient Israel. It has a nice section on the Divine Council, but it again delves into priesthood and cult. Again, the sacrificial system. He has discussions of what sacred space means, clean and unclean, all those sorts of things that you would associate with Israelite religion. So I recommend Miller's Religion of Ancient Israel very highly. Mark Smith, The Early History of God, Yahweh, and the Other Deities in Ancient Israel. Now, Smith is going to be writing from a critical perspective, meaning a non-evangelical stance. I don't want to suggest that evangelical scholars are not critical thinkers. That is not how the term is being used. But just so that you know where Smith is coming from, uh, I, I like Smith's uh, material. I, I, I have disagreements with it, as readers know. But this is a great survey for getting into divine counsel material, the whole, uh, all the debates about whether the Israelites were originally polytheist or not, what's going on with El names for God, like Yisrael and El Shaddai, El Olam, and then Yahweh. I mean, there's no El element. El, of course, is the primary name for the God of, of Canaan uh, that we know from Ugarit, and the Hebrew Bible uses it as well. So what's going on with all that? It, it, it It's really a good uh, volume for getting you into the discussion as academics have it, whether they are evangelicals or not. Richard Hess, Israelite Religions, an Archaeological and Biblical Survey. Hess is an evangelical scholar, and he's a leading figure in uh, Israelite religion in that, that area of study. This is a survey of basically all the issues and who holds what view, and it focuses on the archaeological material. Uh, again, this is the kind of thing that you'd probably see required uh, in a seminary course or a graduate course in Israelite religion, but I, I highly recommend it. Uh, Trig V. Medinger. His book, In Search of God, The Meaning and Message of the Everlasting Names. This is a good one-volume introduction to the names for God in the Old Testament and what their religious significance was in their original context. As far as the culture and life in ancient Israel, I think the best resource that I could recommend here, and it, it's amazingly detailed, uh, it's sort of a no-stone-unturned approach on 
just literally every aspect of life in ancient Israel, whether you're a common person or you're royalty. Uh, it, it's really, in my mind, unsurpassed. It used to be a two-volume set, but you can get it in one now. And that is Roland DeVoe's Ancient Israel, Its Life and Institutions. It's just excellent. I think if you get one book on culture and everyday life in ancient Israel, uh, again, religious aspects, non-religious aspects, all the social strata, this is it. Marriage and family, uh, even you know pastoral agricultural practice. They're, they're, they're just. It would be hard to find something that you'd really want to care about in terms of Israelite Israelite life that DeVoe doesn't cover. It's just excellent. Bruce Wells has a recent book called Everyday Law in Biblical Israel, an introduction. Uh, this is Wells' specialty, Ancient Near Eastern Law and Israelite Biblical Law. Uh, this is a sort of a, a, an introduction and an overview of that field. Uh, different types of laws. Of course, you get into crime and punishment, that sort of thing. Uh, Wells's book is excellent. William Deaver has just come out with a book called The Lives of Ordinary People in Ancient Israel, When Archaeology and the Bible Intersect. In some ways, this would update the information in DeVoe, but by no means will it touch DeVoe. It, it will not surpass that. And for, again, my frank opinion is that DeVoe's is, is just it uh, for, for this sort of thing. But if you're interested specifically in archaeology and, and you want it to be more current, I decided to add Deaver's book uh, to the list. And lastly, Ebeling's book, Women's Lives in Biblical Times, I think is really worth considering having in your library and reading. Again, it's not going to surpass DeVoe. DeVoe will certainly uh, you know, touch on, on the, the life of women in ancient Israel. But again, it's current, it's up to date, and I wanted to make sure I added it to the list. Well, that's my list of, of the most highly recommended works for learning about the ancient Near Eastern context of the Bible and specifically directing you to books where scholars have spent years in that material and have produced volumes or specific essays uh, doing the work for you, telling you, showing you how the biblical material can be read and needs to be read through the lens of, through the context of, the world in which the biblical writers actually lived, uh, the worldview that they were part of. And so I hope you'll take advantage of at least some of these resources. Thanks for listening to the Naked Bible Podcast. To support this podcast, visit www.nakedbibleblog.com. To learn more about Dr. Heiser's other websites and blogs, go to www.drmsh.com.